Down here in, in Mako, and down here it's Good Friday, and there's well everybody's closed and doing stuff, and and let me just tell you what in in Mako they know how to have a get together. But I just thought I'd go live with, for just a second. I got a new print back today, and a whole process. So I picked up the new Pro 9000, excuse me, the Pro 1000 printer for using while I'm out of the country. And uh, it's it's big, but it's not huge like the Canon 8300. Been doing beautiful prints coming out of that. And I just actually went down today. Uh, I made a print and I took it down to, to a local frame shop here. Uh, total cost to have the framing done was about $60. And we're talking the mat, everything. So let me show you guys. And it really, really came out beautifully. Let me see if I can kind of get some close-ups. Uh, this is one of my ones done up in Oregon. Uh, this this particular one was actually shot on four x five film, and it's uh, it's one of my favorites. I believe this one went to the general collection in international competition. So actually, this here, this print was shot on my Linhof here, and. Uh, admittedly, most of the work I do, I do on the digital because it's so practical, but I love when I can shoot him with this. This was actually shot on uh, Kodak. No, this was shot on uh, Fuji 100 color uh, negative film. And then I, I processed it myself and then I scanned it and did a, a full process conversion using uh, silver presets and, and Lightroom channels and all that kind of stuff. And actually, I mean, that's a little bit of a hybrid process, but I have to say, I love the process that you can get from taking a film image and then in color and then converting it using the digital process. But you can see here, we did this with a non-glare glass and uh, a lot of my stuff, I've traditionally done canvas, but down here in Mako, um, I'm able to print and then take these in and very reasonably get these beautiful glass matted pieces. And you can see that they did a good job here. I mean, this whole thing is backed, it's sealed, it's, it's all been hand done. Uh, this is off the Canon Pro 1000. So this is roughly a, a 17, a 22 inch wide print. That's what the largest uh, standard size sheet that the Pro 1000 from Canon will print. Uh, a little smaller than my normal 24 inch wall portrait size. And it's great because I'm able to print it on a printer that's not, doesn't take a pickup truck, right? The detail that the, really the live stream is not going to do justice. But I wanna talk about this print a little bit and in relation to how we've been making uh, black and whites. And one of the things that I've really learned the black and white is all about tone, right? Now, admittedly, all of our images are all about tone, but the black and white is really about tone. And this is one of the things we really emphasize in the new Silver Shadows, the Silver 3 presets, was really using that whole tonal range. And one thing you'll see in this image is that we're using the whole tonal range. A lot of times I think we fall into this trap. Two things I wanna discuss before we close out. One is avoiding the trap of too much mid-tone. People think that having a lot of dynamic range means everything being gray and crushed into the mid-tones. And this applies to color or black and white, but especially black and white. Having good dynamic range is about being able to capture a lot of range in the scene, right? The sky all the way to the shadows has good detail, even though there was a lot of stops of range. And occasionally people, you know, we use bracketing or we use a good exposure techniques on these really good sensors we have now, and we keep that dynamic range. Most of my images that are high dynamic range were done with one single frame. They were just well planned. This image has a lot of dynamic range and it's got great detail, but just because you don't have to have dynamic range, and this is, you may have seen the one I've done from Oregon of Thor's Wells, looking straight into the sunset while looking at the foreground with all the water. Huge amount of dynamic range. It pushed the A7R2 sensor to its maximum and yet it was still one frame, okay? So let's switch this around actually again, and let me just show you guys, if we're thinking in terms of using the whole tonal range, and this is what I started doing, when I thought, let me tell you what changed my black and whites and started making them much richer and more powerful and beautiful and intense, whatever you wanna call it. When I switched and said, no, I want white, all the way to nearly clipping, which we see in the water. Now I usually watch to make sure I don't actually clip those highlights. So in my file, you can see there's detail in this water. These highlights are not clipped, 
but the highest highlights are pushing all the way to the lower midside of zone 10, right? That final stop just before clipping. Then you look up in these details here and you'll see the same thing. You'll see blacks all the way down into zone one, sometimes even a little bit of shadow clipping, which is okay because it's still gonna print. Uh, sometimes if you print a clipped white, it's just this harsh and it draws the eye. You don't want too much shadow clipping. Uh, and generally I don't want any highlight clipping and I want very little shadow clipping. So we're using the entire range in this image. That means when I say the entire range, it's not a, it's not a definition of how much dynamic range was in the scene. We're using the range from black to white rather than crushing our histogram into the midtones, right? Which is the mistake a lot of people make in HDR. And again, remember, HDR is about what? HDR is about how much dynamic range you're able to capture and control. If you can see everything, you can see nothing because you end up with a confusing scene. You need contrast. You need black to white. And so when I put my measure and said, no, use the tonal range, and I do this in color too, but I especially did it in black and white. When I put my measure to say, I want, I want tone all the way down to the blacks and all the way up to the whites, but with limited clipping, that changed the way that I made black and white images. Because even though inherently we know we should have contrast, by putting that visualization standard in my mind, I'm now looking for it. I'm looking for it when I shoot. I'm looking for it when I process. I'm looking for it in terms of thinking, how am I going to make that image? And that gave me a lot of power. The other thing is presentation. We don't print our images enough, and this is something I talk about. That's why even though I'm down here, um, in, in Mako, and I may be moving around and things like that. I'm still making prints and I'll either, I'll gift these to people or whatever I need to do. I'll, I'll, I'll do a showing somewhere. But the point is we're taking this through to full presentation. And so by, by having a print that's displayed, right? There's nothing, you're never going to compete showing somebody a photo on your phone or your iPad as you are when you make a real print and you carry it through. And you're never gonna fulfill your own visualization and image making skills the same unless you make prints. Making prints teaches you the entire process, making the good print. How should you display it? How should you mat it? I love the clean white mat on this. I also like this frame. It's a little bit of a wood grain, but it is kind of a metallic and it just goes really good with the black and white. It really offsets it. But whatever your look is, whatever it is that you're trying to make, guys, take it all the way through to that finished print. Use the tonal range, use the tools we have, make a print. Don't just make a loose, you know, floppy old canvas and stick it on the wall, frame it, mat it, make, a, make an heirloom canvas and put it in a frame, you know, lacquer it. Do the process of making an image complete and it's gonna change everything for you. It's gonna change the way you see light. It's gonna change the way other people see your work. It's gonna help you believe in the product you're making and improve that product you're making to be better. I can say that on my road to getting my master's, I, I started entering more competitions to challenge myself. And it wasn't that I wasn't a good photographer before, but what I realized when I started challenging myself to stretch my limits is that I pushed myself further. So I went for that PPA master's degree, which is earned by entering competitions and by getting merits from your skills, right? And it took me some years to, to get that, but along the way, I learned so much more about the image making in the process. It made me a better photographer, it made me understand my medium better, and it made me appreciate and believe more in, in the work that I do. So just some thoughts today, wanted to show you guys the print. I'll do more videos like this if you guys enjoy them, like it, share it. You guys have a good weekend, peace.